Modeling corners in Blender is not as easy as it first might seem, but it's something that's really essential to get to grips with. In this video, I'm going to take you through the shear tool and give you a challenge to practice it by yourself. And this is all part of the Get Good at Blender series, a playlist that you can work through and improve your skills in Blender, taking your skills from beginner to advanced levels. The link to the playlist, which you can follow along, is in the description. And the idea is that they get gradually harder as you go through the videos. So your skills gradually increase. If you like what I do, then do check out the other playlists on the channel and my website for more great content. So first of all, let's look at how to make corners. So I'm in the default scene, screencast keys down the bottom corner here, and I'm in Blender 3.0. I've got my default cube selected, and I'm going to go into edit mode with tab. So that's edit mode up here. And I want to extend this face out and come up this way. So I'll select that face, so three to go to face mode, select that face, and let's go to front view for this with one on my numpad, G to grab in the X axis and pull it out this way to somewhere around here. And then many beginners might think that you just press R to rotate and rotate it around like this, and then you can extrude upwards in the Z axis. However, we can see that it's tapered in like this because the face has kept its same dimensions, which doesn't actually work. So I'll undo that and come back to this point here. Instead, we use the shear command. Now it's not as simple as it might look. The tool for it is down at the bottom here, and you can scroll up and down these tools if you need to. And this is probably the easiest way to use it. So I'll click on that and we get this icon like this. And we can use this icon in 3D view. Now looking at it, we want to go up in this direction. So the little cross type thing with the different colors, we select the one that goes along the face. So this one here that we want to shear. So I can pull that backwards and forwards. It doesn't matter how far backwards and forwards I pull it because I can get the dialog box here and it's always either minus one or one. So in this case, it started off as minus, so minus one there, and that's given us the perfect shear. If I go to front view, so now I can press E to extrude, and that will extrude in the normals. If I press Z, that will take it off the normals, and Z again, it will put it into the Z axis, which is what I want. And I can bring it up to somewhere around here, let's say. And at this point, I can scale in the Z, zero. So S, Z, then zero. Z if you're American, of course, and then press enter. So let's say I want to go backwards this way. So I want to either bring this one down, but that one hasn't got any control on it. Instead, this side, I can bring this edge here up. So again, this little controller here, I can click and drag on that and move it up and down. So I'll move it up a bit and we can see it's minus 0.5 at the moment. So I know it's going to be minus one there if I want to come back that way. Otherwise, if I change this to one, I can bring it out that way. So these controllers are much easier to use than figuring out which one of these axes is the correct one. I'll do one more of those. So let's extrude out this way this time. So E then X, bring it out that way and scale X zero. And let's say this time I want to go out in the Y axis this way. So again, we look at our object. I want to bring this edge back and this edge forward. So it's going to have to be this slider here that goes backwards and forwards. So let's bring it back a bit this way. Look at our shear controls. And remember you've got the dialogue that you can extend here and I need to change this to one. I can then extrude in the Y axis, E then Y, scale in the Y zero. And we're starting to get an interesting shape here. Now for those people that don't want to use this control here, so I'll go back to my 3D cursor, which is the default. You can find the shear tool up in the mesh menu under transform. So it's just here. And the shortcut key is shift control, alt and S. So shift control, alt and S, and we've got the shear command. Now this will go perpendicular to my viewport. So if I left click now, you can see the orientation has changed to view. So if you're going to use that, it's best that you are in one of the side front or top views. You can always change it to global down here. And now when I move this, it doesn't seem to be moving anywhere. So it is rather confusing. If I go to side view now with three, we can see the Z axis going up here. So that's one of the correct ones, but the X axis, the other one is going to and from us. So that won't work. So we've got to change this to the Y axis. So it's Z and Y. And now when I change this, you can see it's doing something. This at the moment is obviously going side to side like this. So I'll go back to the side view. And it's really not that easy to figure out which one is which when you're just looking at it like this. It's much easier with the controller. So stick to the controller is my suggestion. So as a challenge to you, I want you to make an interesting shape with lots of corners. And let me know how you get on with the tool in the comments or any questions you have. More advanced users, you might want to try and join your two ends together using something like the bridge tool. If you're a beginner, don't worry too much about that. If you want to share the results, then you can join the Discord server or just tag me in something like Twitter or Instagram. Links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.